Welcome to Talking Hope, breakthrough conversations about preventing, treating, and curing cancer. Brought to you by City of Hope, an NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. Hope lives here in Orange County. Hi, I'm Darren Godden, and this is Talking Hope. My guest today is Carrie O'Neill, nursing manager at City of Hope, Newport Beach. Carrie, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to getting to know you. Um, congratulations, first of all, on your recent um, celebration being recognized on a national stage by the Oncology Nursing Society as a finalist for the Extraordinary Healer Award. What a great recognition. Oh, thank you. It was an amazing event and so many great nurses there and everyone in the audience really could have been recognized. Um, it was uh, an honor to be recognized like that. It was yeah, very I was going to say, how did... <laughs> How did that feel to be to be honored by your peers like that? Oh, it was great. And, it, um, you know, it uh, that's obviously not why we do what we do. But it's nice that, um, you know, your teammates and your coworkers and um, and people recognize the special work that oncology nurses do. So it was it was really, really great. And my daughter, who's a new nurse, was there with me. So it made it all that much more special. Oh, that is special to be able to share it with the next generation. And exactly. I know you've been nursing for over 40 years, I understand. So you yeah. probably have been <laughs> passing it on to the next generation for a long time. So um, take us back. What what sparked your passion for the nursing profession? Um, well, you know, uh, thinking back on it, I, I always liked math and science. And um, when my uh, grandfather was very sick, I can still remember my dad coming home and <clears throat> he was in one of those uh, nursing homes at that, you know, at that time, it was a few years ago. And, um, and he had said, um, he was passing away, he was dying. And he called out to the nurse and said, hold my hand, nursey, I think I'm going to die. And it just made, it made me realize how special having somebody there with you was, um, was to patients. And then as it turns out, my um, great aunt, when I went back to Ireland with my family and um, my parents, um, turns out she was the nurse that slept in the hospital at night um, years and years ago on this little uh, community hospital in Ireland. So I guess it's, it's in my blood a little bit. It's in your blood. Um, <laughs> I share a similar story. When I was uh, a teenager, I lived with my grandparents. They were like my parents and um, my grandfather died of lung cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and on the last day, um, when he passed, the home health nurse was there and, um, she was actually kneeling down next to his bed and praying for him as he took his last breath. So, um, that also put something in me for healthcare. I thought I would go on to be a doctor someday that didn't quite work out, but here I am hosting the podcast <laughs> and talking to you. So, um, that, right? <laughs> but uh, special, special, um, memory as well. So you just you know, um, realize how important healthcare, healthcare people are to, um, to everybody, not just patients, but families and, and all that, you know, it's so oh, that's awesome. So you got your start or your, your training at a great community hospital. And, uh, here you are now at a NCI designated cancer center exactly. that is really <laughs> focused on the one thing, um, on, on really taking care of patients who have cancer and really right. trying to beat cancer. So um, tell us, what are what are the keys to being an oncology nurse? Well, I think, um, you know, you have to, there's a, there's a few main things I, I feel like. You really have to be um, sympathetic and empathetic um, to your patients and what they're going through. This is probably the hardest thing that they've ever had to deal with. Um, and you also have to be, um, intellectually curious, I guess, is um, to because the, everything's changing. You know, you can have um, a treatment one day and then the next day it's changed and you have to, there's always new drugs, There's all, which is great. You know, when I first started, there was maybe three or four drugs that were the main drugs and everybody got treated with those drugs. And now it's so fine-tuned and personalized that you really have to stay up on your game and really, um, you know, keep up on education, keep up on new drugs, keep up on on side effects. Um, and you really have to be able to be knowledgeable about that to be able to share with your patients. Because uh, years ago, every time you, most patients that got chemotherapy, almost all were in the hospital. It was a hospital-based treatment. 
and the world of oncology has just moved so much toward the outpatient world where patients really need to be the ones educated and knowledgeable about what's going on so that they can advocate for themselves and get the right, um, uh, their, treat, their side effects treated um, and be knowledgeable about how chemotherapy works or immunotherapy or targeted therapy so that they're able to handle the things that come um, with that and be able to communicate to their care team to be able to solve some of those problems. I always tell people, you know, if you don't know if it's a problem, call us because we have so many tricks in our little bags that you, you know, something could be bothering you that you don't even realize is a symptom and we can tell you how to fix it. So communication with the uh, care team is huge. And, and you, is there a certain type of person that, that goes into oncology nursing? Gosh, you know, I think, um, when I think about oncology nurses, um, I just feel like they're they're never in it for the money. Um, you know, they're in it for uh, caring for people and relationships. Because with oncology patients, it's not like it's a surgical case and you go in and take care of the patient, which everybody needs and is great. But you have to be able to develop relationships and trust with your patients for them to have good outcomes in their care. And I think the more um, uh, knowledgeable you are and the more you can um, instruct the patient and, and, um, and pass on that knowledge, even, you know, why are you giving a nausea medication and how does that nausea medication work? And um, if they understand it, they're much more better, um, they're much more able to control their symptoms and really be at home and enjoy um, themselves as opposed to suffering through things. You know, Carrie, I, I've seen many um, patient comments and um, often your name has been mentioned, especially as we open Newport Beach, Fashion Island, what, about a year and some change ago, almost a year and a half ago now. Like um, three years. Is it? It's been You're right. Years. You're right. Three years. <laughs> I don't know where I'm doing the math in my head. Jeez, <laughs> yes, you're right. About three and a half years ago now. Um, you've been mentioned, and I think it's because you and, and your, your colleagues there, you really don't view nursing just as a profession, do you? It's more of a calling to you. Oh, um, for sure. Talk, talk to us about that. What does that really mean? What, what does that, how does that make the work different? Well, I think, you know, we all have the same goals um, and we all work together as a team. In fact, <clears throat> I just came from the clinic and we had dueling reactions side by side with two patients and all the nurses jumped in and, you know, um, we all just worked together. One was giving the drugs, one was running to the pharmacy, getting the drugs, um, asking how the patient is, you know, um, doing vital signs and just really working together as a team. And I think when it seems like oncology nurses, they have their goal as the patient and they're so patient focused um, that whatever you can do for the patient to make it easier for them or to get them through something is um, is what you what you do. And um, I give my nurses a lot of credit. You know, they just stepped right in um, and took over and went and, you know, did what they were supposed to do. And it wasn't even any um, words, really. We just handed to somebody, here's the medication, here's this, how's the patient, what are the vitals, and um, just all worked together as a team. And it was really nice to see that. Uh, we're so thankful for, for all of you there. Um, Another question for you. Do oncology nurses form a different type of relationship with their patients than maybe other types of nurses? Well, I think we do. And, and we try to make it so that cancer isn't their life. It's just a piece of their life. And so we really encourage um, them to continue, you know, living and do the things that are important to them and really bring it into perspective. Um, I just had a patient who um, went back to his daughter's graduation, and it was really, really important to him. And we gave him medication. We built him up. We, I, I threatened him to not take off his N95 mask. Um, mm -hmm. And he was so happy that he went. His daughter was really happy and um, he came back without being sick. So I think I threatened him enough. <laughs> And he listened, he listened, he listened to you. You you said something very um, important there. You said cancer is not um, their life. It, it's, it's a part of their life. And I know I hear that often cancer patients or patients with cancer say, it's not my cancer. I didn't ask for it. Don't call it my cancer. Um, those words are important. And those, that encouragement that you give is so important as a nurse. 
Um, I'm wondering, uh, this is probably a good time to ask it. What does, what does hope mean to you, Carrie? Well, you know, I think um, kind of just that it means that um, hope means helping people through uh, their journey so that it doesn't become their life. It, um, cancer is not their life. It's just a, a piece of it. And whatever we can do to help help them continue to meet those milestones and do the things that they want to do and things that are important to them and be able to support them in, in those dreams and, and, and through their challenges so that they are able able to continue to make it just a piece of their life and not take over their life. And, and people need balance and they need to still be able to, it's almost like you give them permission to do those kind of things. We give them restrictions and we tell them how to do them correctly or safely, um, but they still need to be able to know that they can do those things and still be a part of their families and their gatherings and, and all that and not have this totally take over. That's, that's, uh, yeah, that's so beautiful. And I'm so appreciative of who you are as a person and, and as a nurse, um, taking care of our patients. And I know if, um, if I ever am in that situation, I'm going to want to have you as my nurse. So, <laughs> um, I think it's a, a, a good time to also talk about, you, you said you, you, uh, were at your daughter's, um, or your daughter is going to be a nurse as well. Right. So, um, we're trying to build that pipeline here in orange County for more nurses. We know there's a nursing shortage. Um, there's a lot of great organizations in the market that also need other nurses, and we're trying to re recruit um, folks to, to come and be a, be a part of what we're doing here at City of Hope. So what would you say to nursing students or newly graduated nurses who may not know exactly what area they want to go into? What would you tell them about oncology and how would you draw them in? Well, um, and we do have some nursing students here, um, and they do, um, he actually just joined our Oncology Nursing Society, so we're already kind of reeling him in, and get him in, getting him excited is interesting because I did have a student one time who came up, and I, I was precepting them, and um, he came up to me and said, I didn't realize how happy it was up here. And I think just changing the way people look at oncology, that it isn't um, you know, it isn't a sentence. It's it's just it's another disease, and it can be treated, and you can live your life. Um, and I think we've had so many advances. You know, even if, especially in the time that I've been in oncology, that um, sometimes people only hear the bad stuff. They don't hear about all the good stuff that's either coming down the pipe or how things have changed. You know, I tell my patients that years ago we waited for people to get sick before we gave them medication, um, right? And I, so I used to tell them, call me in at three o'clock because I, six hours from now, I'm gonna, you're gonna not feel well. And we, uh, it wasn't in our mindset to um, pre-medicate. And now, I mean, we very rarely have anybody sick in the clinic. Um, we pre-medicate, we try to account for symptoms and prevent them. And not only in the clinic, but in the, on, when they're home as well. So people's journeys through chemotherapy aren't what they used to be in you know years ago it's really come a long way and people are able to go to work um you know we I have some patients I can't keep them I can't get their appointments in because they're traveling so much and I have to work around their travels um uh, I know not to interfere with um my lady's hair appointments you know we have to work around those um so there's we just we want to make sure that nurses coming into it know that it's a it's an exciting field and it's not something that um, and it's not something that, um, uh, you know, is just, uh, sad. It's, it's not a sad place. In fact, our, my, our patients call it cancer camp. Um, you know, they come here, they have a good time. Um, it's like cheers in Boston, you know, every, they walk in the door, everybody says hi, they wave and, you know, they really, um, they really, uh, realize that it's, it's, if they have to be somewhere, I can't tell you how many times that they have to be somewhere and get their treatment. They can't think of a better place to be that the atmosphere here is, is happy and it's, it's comfortable. They feel like we're family and it's home. Um, and it's a, it's a good place to be. And, and in fact, I had a lady yesterday that said, I know this sounds funny, but, um, but I kind of love coming here and, and talking to everybody. I missed you guys when I was in the hospital, you know, this was, you know, we're, especially during COVID because we opened right at COVID as well. Um, you know, we were their entertainment. We were their social life. We were their outing. 
And um, it really made the uh, patients and staff grow close together. And then we finally got to meet some of their spouses, you know, because they weren't allowed to come in. Um, and it was really nice to then connect. Oh, we knew, they didn't realize we knew so much about them, right, when they came in, because we've had conversations with the patients. Wow. So it really is a, um, it's a community. It really, it's it, a community. exactly. They're on a journey and we're right there with them on their journey and we're a part of it with them, their families, their caregivers. Um, that's so exciting. Carrie, thank you so much for, uh, like I said, for, for what you do for City of Hope, for what you've done for our patients. Thank you for being an advocate for nursing. Thank you for being an advocate for oncology nursing. And, um, Thank you again for what you're doing for patient satisfaction as well. I mean, it sounds like, um, you know, that community you're building is really important and um, it makes the, all the difference, I think, for patients to come to a place that not only is top in, in care um, and, and able to give them the most recent and the most advanced breakthrough care, uh, but also for people who really care for them and care for their families. So. Um, thank you for everything you're doing and for leading that that team there at Newport Beach and training up the next generation of nurses as well to be so awesome. So well, I can't imagine um, doing anything else, honestly. Well, thank you so much, Carrie, for, for joining us today. And thank you all for joining us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our next episode of Talking Hope. I'm Darren Godden. We'll see you next time. Thank you all for listening to Talking Hope, where breakthrough conversations about preventing, treating, and curing cancer have been brought to you by City of Hope an NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. This is the hope you've been waiting for. For more information, visit cityofhope.org forward slash OC or make an appointment at any of City of Hope's five Orange County locations, including City of Hope Orange County Lennar Foundation Cancer Center, the most advanced cancer treatment center in Orange County. Call 888-333-4673. That's 888-333-4673. H-O-P-E.